Okay, let's say hello to Tony Basilio by saying, how long did your post-game show last? I'm not as tired as I look right now. Um, actually, I am. It, uh, we went a little over six hours, which was long enough for me. My body at some point in, in a process of hour five said, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> for, lack of a, for lack of a better way of putting it. So, um, but yeah, a lot of fun, really fun to win a game like that, guys. A lot of fun. So it got hairy at the end. Did that affect any of the caller reaction? Sure. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee went from a surefire cover and a lot of people, you know, people gamble these days. It's just the way it is. And, uh, people are going to bet on their team. And, you know, I was talking on my daily show today. I said, you know, to me, if I'm wanting to really enjoy my team playing football, the last thing I would do is bet on them. But that's me. So before I turn it to Watson, yeah, Tennessee's got an open date before they get LSU at 11 in the morning. Number one, it seems to me the open date is at the perfect time emotionally. Mm-hmm. And then getting LSU before these people get totally snockered is a double victory. What do you think? I think you're right, although LSU is unbeaten in that time slot uh, so far this century. So, But they've had pretty good football teams, too. And who knows who they've played, you know? We have to dig into that. But I believe their number is something like 8-0 um, in that in that 11 a.m., which is kind of absurd uh, time. But, um, yeah, all things being equal, Hooker really banged his shoulder up which really hurt Tennessee's play calling and what they could do offensively when it was time to put the game out of, out of uh, reach the other day. And then of course, uh, Tillman, uh, we reported yesterday underwent an arthroscopic procedure on his ankle, which isn't as invasive as they once were. um, But a couple days before the Florida game and they expect to get him back for the LSU game. Of course, anytime you have something like that done, it could take longer than a couple of weeks. So they'll, they'll, uh, we'll be monitoring that for sure. Watson, say hello to Tony. Tony, congratulations to you guys and, and, and you and all your buddies in Knoxville. It, to me, it was a very good win. And it was a good win when Tennessee really didn't beat you the way they normally beat you. Yeah. So in, in that way, I think it's a good win. I, We all still see a defensive issue in some ways. But what I think, Tony, and I'll start with that a little bit, I I told George this on Monday, I think Tennessee is a touchdown better than they were a year ago. What I mean by that is I think the defense, the, the offense can score one less touchdown now and beat a good team, a really good SEC team. And that's progress to me. The other thing the defense... They, they played 77 plays, and I, I I think I'm right about this, and Tennessee only had 69. That is That's not right. the Tennessee way. There's a reason for – one of the reasons for that was Florida went for six fourth downs. And what happens now, and I think you're going to start seeing this, maybe not in the Alabama or Georgia games, but everybody else that plays them is going to think, we got to outscore these guys. That's it. We cannot beat them if we don't score points and we can't keep giving them more possessions. And so, and Tennessee is so good, Tony, in the middle of the field. They, a lot of their yards come in the middle of the field when they get in those spread sets. They just make yards right in. And from 20 to 20 now, Tennessee is, is tough as nails. Gets a little tighter as they get closer. And I think they say, well, heck, we're going to punt it down there. They're going to get it right back down here again. So if we give it to them at the 30, so be it. Uh, But we're going to see more of this. And I think that hurts the defense because when they make those first downs, it's another series that they got to stop somebody. It's like uh, the Vols went three and out and the defense had to go back on the field. Well, and your point's really well taken. I'm digging in my blog right now because – I, I, we've got a guy named Matt Dixon who joins me, who's really excellent. He's really observant. And, and, and he put some numbers at the bottom here 
uh, regarding how how well Tennessee's done. He calls them season trackers. Red zone offense over the weekend, six for six, five touchdowns versus Florida. So far in the year, red zone offense, when they get down there, Coach, they're 38 of 42 possible points, uh, or they were 38 of 42 uh, over the weekend, 22 for 22, 19 touchdowns, 142 of a possible 145 points on the year. Hey, you do that, you're going to win a lot of football games. And conversely, on defense, you know, they've just been good enough um, to come up with timely turnovers and plays like that because truly that's what they are. I mean, they don't have defensive players. I mean, they just don't. They don't have a lot of speed. I talked to you guys in the preseason. They don't have a lot of speed in their secondary. One of their corners is a converted safety. Um, you know, they kind of are what they are. The good thing is there's not really a ton of teams on their schedule that can throw the ball over the top of them, Florida included. They defended Florida uh, Watson exactly as you said they should last week. And they made that quarterback make plays. And I'm going to tell you something. He was excellent Saturday. He, You compare that to the way he looked the previous six, seven quarters of football. I mean, that guy was like reborn. I don't know where that came from. Well, I, I think he's been hurt. And I think he yeah. was healthy. They they. They knew he was hurt. They didn't use him much. Uh, it, he probably got hurt in the Kentucky game is what I would bet. And he went ahead and played in the game. Kentucky probably hurt him physically. And he had a couple of weeks to get better, and he was well. He's a good player. He's a He, play, he threw the ball much better than I thought he would. Uh, he threw a lot of drop back passes in the game and and really handled it very well, stayed in the pocket well. Um that's another reason that it's a good win because that could have been a real easy win if he played like he played in the last couple of games. He came in and played a really good game. And and uh, like we said, though, Tony, you can't beat Tennessee if you don't outscore them. And that's in every game. Somebody's going to have more points than the other. But I'm talking about 38-33. 43-38, 31-28. You've got to beat Tennessee in a high-scoring game because you're not going to hold this offense. Um, I don't think anybody other than Alabama and Georgia have any chance to hold this offense under 30 points unless, a big unless, and that's Hendon Hooker getting hurt. And uh, the one, the one, And I'm going to get to offense next, but one thing I think they got to be careful about in my opinion, especially yes, when sir. they get good leads, is don't put the ball in his hands too many times yep. and get him hurt because there, there's Milton is better, but he he's not Hooker. This kid, in my opinion, at the end of the year, if if they're in the nine win area late in the year, eight nine win area, this kid's going to have the best stats in the country, and he's going to be one of four people up for the Heisman, in my opinion. Well, I think you're right. And I think the thing that really concerned me Saturday about the game is the amount of unnecessary hits he took. Yep. You know, at some point in the open field, you got to get on the ground. And look, I love his, his uh, spirit and his level of compete. In fact, I, I opined after the game, and we'll say it again here, he looked like a guy, if you look at the way he played the game, his body language, he looked like a, a fifth-year senior who had lost four straight to Florida and, and was not going to go out like that. But instead, this is his first start against the Gators. I mean, think about that. Did he look like a guy to you that did that uh, had anything less than full and complete ownership of that program? I no, mean, but I haven't seen him. I didn't think he looked like that against Akron, Tony. He's that, he's that competitive. He's a very yes. tough, competitive yep. kid. And I'm 100% in agreement with you. They need to work on him this open date on getting down and only take shots when they matter. And that's making a first down, scoring a touchdown. Uh, yeah. Don't take shots unless they matter. If you've already gained 15, don't try to gain 17. And he's got to learn that, but he's very, very competitive kid mm -hmm. and a very tough kid. I, I don't, I don't think he – if you don't coach him different, I don't think he treats any game any different. He goes out there to be the best he can be, and that's the thing I think he has. Uh, now that he's gotten a, a piece – understands this offense, 
he's just being him now. I mean, he's just being very competitive and he's cool. He's cool under pressure. He, yeah. he doesn't get uh, bothered with pass rush, which there's less than half of those in the country that don't get bothered with a pass rush. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'd say there's probably about 15% in the country, if you're really honest, that don't get bothered with pass rush. There's one four, four hours down the road in Tuscaloosa that don't get bothered with pass rush mm -hmm. either. And, uh, and so I, I, they got to protect him better, Tony. Are there, there, it don't take but one and he's out for the season with a broken collarbone now. And then all of us, or saying, uh oh, now what happens? And well, I know I'm the guy you, behind yeah. him is a solid yeah. player, but he's yeah. there, he's not him, he's not Hooker. I want to give you an interesting scenario that happened the other day. You tell me from your put your coaching put your coaching hat on here. Because I, I love coming under wing with you here on uh, Tuesday, and I mean that. Um, because people are like, I, I I'm quoting you on my show, and people are like my gosh, I mean, this guy's like uh, again, it's like Confucius, you know. I'm I, I quote you like uh like we're Confucius back in the day, but so the other, so the other day at the end of the game, okay, this is what I found out. They did not attack downfield when it was time to put the game away, which really allowed Florida to stay in the game. They didn't throw the ball past the sticks. Um, they didn't do the things they were doing before because Hendon Hooker's non-throwing shoulder uh, was in such pain and it inhibited his ability to throw it downfield. Uh, now, I talked to some people, and you've mentioned Milton before, and, and I talked to people, you know, people are kind of split on that. You know, when you say, well, why do you have a backup quarterback? To me, Watson, I don't put a backup quarterback in that spot. I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think it's fair to the team. And I don't think it's fair to Hooker, who's, if he tells me he wants to go back out there. But then, doesn't it come to a point where, if he can't function and it almost got you almost allowed you to get beat, which is almost what happened. I mean, let's face facts here. Florida had the ball with a chance to win somehow. I don't know how that happened, but they did. Um, with your coach hat on, how do you handle that? Uh, you got to go with your guy uh, to me till he can't do something. I, I'll promise you, if you call one of the vertical passes they throw or a skinny post, he would have completed the ball. So I, I just, I'm telling you, he wouldn't be out there if he couldn't have made that throw. It might have hurt like the Dickens, but he would have yeah. made the throw. Yeah. And if he's hurt that bad, he don't need to be out there for his sake. So, but I thought, Tony, to be very honest, mm -hmm. I thought they got conservative at the end. Tennessee is not a, they better come up with, a four-minute offense. What do you want to do when you got a two-score lead with four mm -hmm. minutes to go? Do you want to keep going? They got conservative and got in a two-tight end set and ran the ball three straight times. If you're going to do that, you better practice it and get better at it. Well, the problem is they're not, not running. Yeah, they're not. They're that not did not running. look like Tennessee to me. No. So I'm no. more saying I thought they got a little conservative at the end, and spun? it's easy to okay. throw it back on Hooker that he couldn't make the throws. You think I'm being uh, spun? Cause, cause so they that's do that. the, yeah. that's what are you going to do if you yeah. got Alabama down two scores, ten points, and there's four minutes to go in the game? Are you going to keep being wide open and doing your stuff, or are you going to get more and try to make one, two first downs, and the game's over? They tried to make one, two first downs, didn't make them. Gave the ball right back to Florida. Florida goes right back down and scores. Boom. Now you're onside kick, and you've got a chance to win the game. So I promise you, behind closed doors, they're talking that right now. What are we going to do in the next big game when we're up 10 and we got the ball? You hear people talking four-minute offense all the time. There's two types. There's a four-minute offense to eat clock, and there's a four-minute offense to go score. And – uh they got to decide if they want to eat clock or go score. They're not going to score if they get in that set. They might make two first downs and that end the game, but they didn't, and they punted it right back. So I looked at that a little different than than maybe some of your your guys do. And I believe me now, I'm I'm a fan of theirs. I love the offense. They 
they make me feel, it reminds me of things I believe. What they're doing, Tony and George, if I got time, I'm going to say it here real quick. What they're doing is they're making you think before the ball is snapped on defense. And with those wide, by going fast and those wide splits, and those wide splits are making you change your defense for one week. That's exactly what I always thought in my day is I'd go from the wishbone to no backs. The reason I did that a bunch was I wanted you to have to do something you don't normally do. And I was inferior maybe with talent, but I would make you do something you don't normally do on that one week. That's what Tennessee is doing to people right now. And it also, when you go to no backs empty, it, uh, and teams aren't prepared for it back when I was playing, not many did it, there's only one check you'd have. So we'd learn what that check was and we knew what they were going to be in. Well, that's a little bit of what Tennessee's doing to people right now. When they spread them all over, they're having to get in a single safety look and they're nearly playing man coverage every down. Man, what an advantage that is. But they're making people have to think, defenses think, and when you think, you're half a player. That's what's going on now, and it's going to be interesting to watch as they go into this season further how these defenses keep playing them. Well, two things, right? So what's the four-minute offense going to look like from here? Because they are going to get in that spot again where they're up. Yes, sir, either, Will. And, and, and so what's that going to look like? The, I think the thing from their standpoint, and the reason I believe Hooker really was – his shoulder really was addled uh, was that at the end of it all, that's just not who they are to take the foot off the gas there. That's just not, that's how, that's not how this guy's played, but this is the first real game of consequence he's been in. And you and I both know that's a different deal. I mean, it's a different deal when you're playing some directional school and you keep playing and you keep throwing and you know, this is the Florida game. There's a hundred thousand people there. I mean, there are real stakes in this thing. So, it was yep. interesting to see the end of it because it was um, – if I was to believe and, and go on your line of thought, I, I would say they got too conservative. Yeah, I, I would say that. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Tony, I'm going to assume you do not do a post game for open date. George, if I did a post game for open date, I literally would I, – I don't even know how – an adjective to describe me, but yes, I do not do a post game for open date or Braves Mets. So a week from now, mm -hmm. LSU game 11 in the morning ends around two 30. Tell people how they can hear you. Yeah. So I'm on, I'm at T club team and I'm on every day. And, um, today we did three plus hours, uh, on my program, which was nuts. Cause usually I just do two on a radio, but, um, I went an hour plus today simply because I just want to see how much I can, I guess, exhaust myself here. Um, <laughs> and, and really, I don't have any friends, or, you know, or borderline <laughs> in life. So what's the point, you know, at, at this stage? Yeah, it's been a real time of self-assessment for me after Friday, uh, after uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, guys. Because I'm telling you, my body in that fifth hour said, Tony, I don't. And I talked to myself, Tony, I don't know what you're doing here, but this is not working. <laughs> this is literally not working, but it is a lot of fun. Hey, these guys are top 10 in America. Now, I'm not sure if they're one of the 10 best teams in America, but what a good story that is for them to oh, come yeah. out of September, get a couple of quality wins. And up here in Knoxville, this place feels alive again, which, you know, um, it's it's pretty neat. It really is. Okay. Leave me with this on uh -huh. the noise meter Saturday. Mm hmm. Neyland Stadium was louder than you've heard it since when? I, I think that, you know, probably the loudest day game that, that's been in there for a, in a long time is uh, the, the assessment. And there's something about games at night where night crowds are louder. And I, I don't know what that is. Is that the acoustics of an evening? Is it the acoustics it's of the acoustics more alcohol? Of Jack Daniels. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> And you said it earlier, you know, Tennessee goes to um, LSU. Now, I've got 23-year-old twins. One goes to Tennessee. One goes to University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. They're both going to the game. They're both on fall break, and they're both going to they're gonna meet down there and go. But here's the rub. When that game kicks off, I just looked at a forecast. They're saying it's going to be 95 degrees that day. 
major plus for the orange. Major he, plus. It is. It's a major it's a plus, plus when they go that fast. I'm telling you, oh, put another I check. I, you know, I didn't put another that. check. I that will wear LSU out, out now. Oh, I love it. Confusion. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this guy, he, he gets quoted tomorrow. They're going to be like, oh, no, that's the Fritz the Wednesday. We're going to quote Watson Brown some more. <laughs> I love it. So, thank you, guys. Tony, you're good to do this, as Thank always. you, Appreciate Thank you. Tony. Have a good night.